So inevitably, when I present these cases, the surgeons in the room um, look at me and go, I wouldn't have done that. I would not have done a combined uh, uh, surgical endo. I just would have done surgery. And the, the cardiologists in the room are kind of snickering, saying, oh, I could have gotten through all that. So um, that being said, I'm going to present these cases and subject myself to any of your criticism. I think there's a few um, targets in the lower extremity that are particularly difficult uh, to manage endovascularly. And that would be at the, especially at the common femoral uh, location where the common femoral and the proximal superficial femoral and profunda are all occluded. <clears throat> also, the, uh, the popliteal artery uh, where um, you may have a long popliteal occlusion extending deep into the trifurcation can be a difficult thing to manage endovascularly. And then down in the foot where the uh, posterior tibial splits into the, the uh, plantar arteries <clears throat> or deep on the dorsalis pedis artery can be difficult to manage uh, endovascularly. I'm going to mostly focus on hybrid approach dealing with the common femoral artery. Um, this is a, uh, an artery that's uh, easily uh, revascularizable uh, with surgery. Repair is very durable, uh, and it would allow revascularization both of the SFA and of the profunda femoral artery, uh, which uh, I think is very important. The profunda really is, uh, is key in case the uh, SFA ever goes down later. Um, it does allow for safe uh, for, uh, future percutaneous access. You can go right ahead and puncture through the patch. And you can combine this hybrid approach with a retrograde or anagrade approach to uh, reopen the aortoiliac tree or go further down the leg. I like to perform endarterectomy and make sure that we uh, revascularize both the profunda and the SFA. Um, there's a number of ways to do this. Personally, I like to just open up the entire artery and go past all of the disease onto the uh, SFA and onto the profunda, uh, no matter how far that is, and then in the left slide, you can see a uh, large Dacron patch, which I take a V out of at the bottom and make a, a pantaloon out of it and suture the crotch at the crotch of the uh, bifurcation. And that way, you can revascularize both the profunda and the SFA. Sometimes the plaque is so bulky and adherent to the wall that the entire artery is destroyed. And then um, we can put in a small bifurcated graft. On the right side, you can see a 12-7 bifurcated graft, anastomosed. Uh, both to the profunda and the SFA. And so here's a case of a uh, common femoral artery uh, occlusion um, with aortoiliac occlusive disease. It's a 76-year-old female with rest pain and gangrene in her right foot. Both common femoral arteries are occluded. The uh, external iliac arteries bilaterally are heavily stenosed with a lot of calcium. And the iliac arteries, uh, the common iliacs, are also um, heavily diseased, and both uh, SFAs are out. So we um, performed patch angioplasty on both sides on her uh, femorals, and this is after we did that and then performed some uh, balloon angioplasty of her iliac arteries. And uh, at the end, we um, did the, the patch on both sides, put in um, <clears throat> covered uh, ICAS stents in the common iliac arteries, crossed the iliac artery bifurcation with self-expanding nitinol all the way down to the patch, and she has a nice uh, wide open result. Now here's another, another case. This is a 56-year-old female with a rest pain involving her left fifth toe. The um, patient had a, a distal aortic stenosis, as you can see in these images here, uh, extending to the bifurcation. On the right side, there's a femoral artery stenosis and an external iliac artery stenosis. And on the uh, left side, the femoral artery and external iliac artery are occluded. Um, one of the ways I like to handle the distal aorta uh, when there's involvement with the common iliacs is to use the uh, endologics graft. It is a uh, bifurcated, stent-supported graft. It sits on the bifurcation. And I think some of the benefits of this uh, graft, rather than doing, uh, let's say, kissing stents midway up the aorta, is it allows you to cross over the bifurcation once again, if needed. And uh, it allows you to do aggressive angioplasty of bulky calcific plaque in the aorta and iliac arteries without fear of rupture. And this is what we did in this case. Uh, and here's her result. Uh, here's another patient who came in, a 67-year-old male who had a, a left common femoral and external iliac artery occlusion. 
managed at an outside institution with a uh, right-to-left fem-fem bypass uh, using a six millimeter six millimeter piece of PTFE down to his SFA. They didn't uh, bother opening up his common femoral or his profunda. So a couple of uh, uh, setups there for uh, occlusion, which he did several times. Uh, really, he should be having a much larger graft for a fem fem and definitely revascularize the profunda. Um, so this is a, a fairly easy uh, hybrid approach. Open up the left femoral artery. I used a vein patch since they had uh, punctured his growing numerous times through the PTFE, didn't want to put a piece of prosthetic in there, but opened up his common femoral and superficial femoral artery and um, subindomally got up into the common iliac artery and used an outback reentry device and then performed iliac artery stenting, restoring flow into his femoral. You can use a similar approach to go antegrade down the leg. Here's a 62-year-old male with a right common femoral artery and SFA occlusion with rest pain and a very short distance claudication. Again, opening, opening up the uh, common femoral artery uh, and the profunda femoral at the same time, leaving a little patch of, uh, or a little nub rather, of SFA that I endodirectomized, and then you can put your sheath right in there and uh, open up the SFA uh, using standard endovascular techniques. Uh, just a, a couple of other uh, comments on some hybrid approaches that we use. Um, here is a, a gentleman with a, a posterior tibial artery occlusion, uh, distal to some tibial work that we did and some SFA work. And I think we could probably get through this with a wire and perform angioplasty. However, the durability of this would be questionable. And I do worry about losing um, one of the plantar arteries and perhaps uh, not allowing the uh, calcaneal branches to remain perfused. Uh, this is an, op uh, an easy open uh, case. You can open up, expose the posterior tibial artery, the ankle, expose, expose both plantar arteries. There are some silks um, putting some pressure on the calcaneal branches. Take a little piece of saphenous vein right from the ankle, and you can get a nice uh, vein patch with a nice um, result and maintain all the flow into that posterior tibial circulation. And one other place we use it, but not often, uh, are in patients who have, let's say, a good popliteal artery for a target, but lousy tibial vessels. Uh, this is a dialysis-dependent renal failure patient with rock-hard calcium through his entire SFA and popliteal artery down to the baloney pop, um, who had ulcers both on his toes and his heel. Uh, if we were to perform a distal bypass all the way down to the DP, we would ignore the uh, posterior circulation and vice versa. So instead, we uh, bypassed short into the popliteal and performed tibial atherectomy and angioplasty, uh, yielding a pretty good result. I appreciate the opportunity to present, and I'd be happy to take questions if there are any. Thank you.